So as Pranil mentioned, today we'll be discussing uh, program indicators. So we'll be doing a quick walkthrough about how we can turn the data that are being captured by the, uh, by the tracker program into meaningful uh, net counts that we can use for analysis. So the learning objectives, just to briefly summarize, was first that we'll be describing the, the concept of a program indicator, um, then describing the individual components that are part of program indicators as well. So the aggregation type, the analytics type, the expression and filter, and discussing a bit about what each of these components of a program indicator actually mean in practice. Uh, then we will create program indicators in DHIS2 together. So uh, we'll do some walkthrough and basics, and then it will be a um, user-led experience in creating program indicators. And hopefully, if we get uh, to it at the end of the session, we're, we will also uh, create combined program indicators or combined indicators. And that's uh, indicators using multiple data sources in DHIS2. So these might be um, combining a program indicator from a tracker program with a population denominator that's entered through an aggregate program, for example. And these can be really useful in a, um, in particular in, uh, in public health use cases to understand service utilization and other things like that. Um, so we will be talking a bit about these percentage indicators as well. So just conceptually, what exactly is a program indicator and uh, why are we discussing it here? Um, program indicators essentially allow for the creation of values based on data elements or attributes belonging to events or tracker programs. And so what this means is that um, you can actually take the individual data items within an event or tracker program and then create some type of aggregate value that can be used in analysis and this can be done you know, at, the, um, at the district or facility level if you're going to be aggregating up a monthly or annual count. Or you could also create a value to sort of summarize an, an individual enrollment or profile. Um, and we'll be getting a bit into examples of all of these for aggregating um, up your organization unit hierarchy or calculating a value for the uh, for the individual client um, through program indicators. So here are some typical scenarios in which you might want to use program indicators. Uh, the first is to perform and display a calculation within or across events. So for example, a percent calculation in which uh, all of the values are in the same event or enrollment or a change in value across an enrollment. So take, for example, a nutrition program where you have the, uh, entered the age, the weight, and the height of the infant. Um, now you can use a program indicator to calculate the, uh, the BMI, the body mass index of that infant using the weight and height. And using z-scores as well, you could also, um, or you could calculate the z-score as well using the age of the infant as well to see um, if they are uh, the correct weight and height for their age. Um, you could also use this to calculate across events as well. So you could also measure the percent uh, weight gain uh, across the enrollment. So from when they first initially entered the program until their their latest uh, check-in, uh, what's been the change of the infant's weight during that time. Um, you could also create an aggregation within an event or enrollment as well. So that could mean um, count the number of cases that have a, a certain uh, lab confirmed diagnosis, for example, or the number of a specific lab test that uh, were performed. Um, and this can be a count that you do for um, within an individual. So you could say, for example, the number of lab tests that um, a woman has received in an antenatal care program. Um, or it could just be the number of um, the number of ANC cases that have uh, hypertension um, across the entire facility or district, right? 
So there are different ways that you can use aggregation within an event or want as well. Um, and so I got a bit into this earlier, but as well, you can create an aggregation across an entire program or enrollment. And this might be um, how you use program indicators to do routine reports. Um, so for example, you might do um, have a program indicator for um, how many children in the child immunization program have been fully immunized. And so you can look across the child's uh, entire record or their entire enrollment and see if they have all of the required immunizations. Um, as I described earlier, you can also create aggregations to see um, how many uh, individuals had a positive difference in weight between the start and end of treatment. Um, or you can also find other cases that would meet <clears throat> filtered criteria across multiple program stages. Um, so for example, you could see um, <clears throat> how many people in a HIV case surveillance program um, are male and um, over uh, 15 years of age and also are TB positive. And maybe these are all you know, attributes or they are um, in a, in a follow-up stage or in an initial case report stage. But you can use program indicators to combine all of those data from different program stages or attributes to, um, to, try to see if that case meets a certain criteria. So here is uh, one example. And we can look at our event report here for this TB program that we are familiar with, right? So we might remember that there is this uh, disease site in the TB program. Um, and so when we initially record the TB case, we say whether this is extra pulmonary or pulmonary. So say, for example, we want to find out how many patients enrolled in the program have extra pulmonary TB, then we can use program indicators. So if we have these five cases here, right, um, all with a um, initial report date in 2021, and we wanted to calculate this for Perry District Hospital, then a value of three is what should be returned for the number of patients with extra pulmonary TB. So um, this is essentially what a program indicator is doing in, in this case. It is filtering all of the cases that meet this criteria, uh, extra pulmonary TB, and it's returning a value, which is the number of enrollments that meet this criteria, right? So um, uh, very briefly, um, we'll be talking about some of the different um, components of a program indicator. And those components that are used in combination to make this evaluation are the aggregation type, the analytics type, uh, the expression, and any filters that are also added. And that determines how these program indicator will be evaluated against your tracker data. So we will explain all of these in detail throughout the demo. Um, and the demo will be done on our uh, demo instance because uh, we have existing dummy data which have been uh, uploaded there. Um, but to get started, I will just uh, exit out of this presentation here and um, walk you through the, uh, the first uh, example. And then I'll come back and explain what each of, these, each of these parts mean in a bit more detail, okay? So for the um, first example, is that we're going to be looking at our TB program, our TB treatment card program again. And um, I already have an example here, but um, I'm going to create another one that looks at the uh, extra pulmonary TB for the patient. So I'm going to, to create a new program indicator here. By the way, you can access this by going to um, maintenance and then under indicator, you will find program indicator and filter to TB treatment card, okay? And then we can add a plus here to create a new, uh, a, a new program indicator. So just to conceptualize what we want to do here, uh, remember from the previous slide, we were trying to count the number of extrapulmonary uh, TB cases. 
And this is found in the TBC, TB disease site data element, right? So what this means is that um, we're going to have to think about where that, um, where that data is stored, what the data element is, and what stage that data element is captured in. Um, and we essentially just want to count the number of events that have that uh, criteria. Um, so just as a very basic name, going to make this the extra pulmonary TB. And just because we have, we have um, an existing one already, I'll make it new, but I'll call it EPTB2 or um, EPTB2. Um, when you are going through this yourself, um, please be sure to add your initials to the beginning of your program indicator. That way we can, uh, it, we can make sure that you've done your correct work. And also because um, these mandatory fields also require to be unique. So we need to make sure there's no clashes with other things. So um, I've added the name, short name and code here. We'll get into a bit more detail maybe later on in the session about you know, good approaches for naming these program indicators because it's um, important that you name them something meaningful um, so that when you are using your analytics apps, you, you know exactly what this program indicator expresses. But for now, we will, um, we will just call this the EPTB um, program indicator. The color and icon you can leave blank for now. These relate to um, some Android features which are not yet developed, but um, so don't worry about that. For the description, it's um, you can make this fairly um, fairly ba basic for right now because again, this is just um, the very first one. So um, we will be saying that this is a count of cases with extra. So um, once we've added that there, now we see the decimals in data output. This you can also leave blank because um, one will be counting cases, which is an integer, and also there is already default settings for decimals and data output. And now here we get to one of our first um, our first major questions, which is what is the um, aggregation type for this program indicator? So essentially, um, the aggregation type is essentially lets us um, uh, summarize um, all of the different um, uh, program indicator values that, that come out of this program indicator. Um, so examples is if we're counting the number of um, events, then we can use aggregation type of count to count the number of events that are returned. Um, if our expression calculates the, the weight change per enrollment, then we might aggregate the average, right? We don't want to count the number of averages that have been, um, that have been calculated already, uh, but we want to take a, an average of all of the weight changes per enrollment to get a sense of our, um, our cohort's weight change, right? So sometimes a, an average or a count or a sum might all, might all be appropriate depending on how you are um, expressing the value of your program indicator. But for this case, I'm just going to make the aggregation type count because uh, we are going to be uh, counting the number of events. So the next thing to consider then is the analytics type. Um, and so usually this will be based on whether or not the um, the data that you are considering for your, uh, for your case or for your program indicator all comes from one discrete event uh, within an enrollment, or if they're taken from uh, multiple events within the enrollment. Um, so for this right now, we are just going to call this an event because we know that this data element is just found in a single discrete event that's non-repeatable in our program. And we are going to see that as soon as we select the event analytics type, then we have um, analytics period boundaries automatically generated. I'm not going to go into detail on analytics period boundaries because of time during this session, but um, if there are lots of things that you can do with analytics period boundaries, once you get more into, um, into details about uh, program indicators. 
So for example, you can use these to calculate cohorts of, uh, of patients, say that we're enrolled 12 months ago, you want to know their current status this month. Or you can do like a cumulative count of the number of um, the number of enrolled patients, and you can drop one um, analytics period boundary. But we won't go into a lot of detail about how you might use those right now, and I will direct you to the documentation uh, to explore more about that or the Slack if you have additional questions. The last things here we won't really discuss are how to use legends, category option combos, and attribute option combinations. Um, sometimes we use this for connecting to an aggregate data export, for example or legend, we won't discuss that. And we'll come back to display and form later. So the next part that we need to consider is our, um, our expression. Um, and so I skipped over the um, uh, aggregation type. Here's the expression. So the expression is a, uh, a mathematical expression that can contain various operators. So um, this might look a lot like uh, program rules, for example. Um, how you can use different uh, expressions to say what the final value of your program indicator should be. So it determines how the indicator is actually being calculated. And these can contain references to a number of different uh, entities within the, um, within the, the uh, tracker enrollment. Um, but if we are to um, look at what we have available here on the right, just ignore the coloring icon at the top here. But you'll see that this looks a lot like the program rules boxes that you were just uh, exploring earlier, right? And so you can use some, um, some expressions and functions here to say like the number of days between two events, for example. Um, but in most cases, I would say that there would be um, two variables that you should keep in mind. And so the, the primary one that we are going to use here, you see that we have our, um, each of our stages with each of its data elements listed on the side, as well as attributes. So um, diagnosis, end of treatment, continuation, attributes, and then variables down here. So in most cases, the, um, the expression part of your program indicator will be either the event count or the enrollment count. And in this case, you know, based off of the description of the program indicator uh, from earlier, uh, we're counting the number of events that have extrapulmonary TB. So our expression, the final value of this output should be the event count. So for each individual who has extrapulmonary TB, their final count will be one, right? There's no additional um, mathematical operation that you're doing on that. And finally, the filter. So um, remember when we said earlier where the data element comes from? and it comes from, the, um, comes from the disease site data element. Um, so the disease site data element is also, as we saw here in the um, event report, or you could also look at this in the tracker capture app, but this is an option set. So when we were entering this data, we see that it's, it has both extra pulmonary and pulmonary. So this is a, an option set, which means that the value might be stored in a code um, that's associated with each option in the, in the option set. So when we look, go to our option set management, again, just like you were doing for uh, exploring program rules, going into option sets here. When we go into option sets, we can then search for these, um, for the option set that's associated with this data element. So in this case, it's TB disease set. And we can see that the code for each option is actually the same as the, uh, the name of the option as well. So the code for extra pulmonary is extra pulmonary. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to say that this filter will filter for all events where the TB disease site in the initial diagnosis stage is recorded as being extra pulmonary, okay? So uh, finally, I'm going to hit save on this program indicator. So again, when I look at this, um, when I look at this after it's been saved, I'm counting the number of events, um, and the total number of events, each one, each one with an expression of one per event. The number of events where the initial diagnosis at the TB disease site was extra pulmonary. 
Now I'm going to go into um, event reports and just look at the, um, the number that were extra pulmonary last year. This might give us a sense we have here. Pulmonary, extra pulmonary disease site last year. You can see there's 28 records here that are extra pulmonary. And also, if I were to go into um, if I were to go into the um, pivot tables app, I can compare this um, this program indicator that we just created with the um, with the correct program indicator that was previously created. So if I go to the program indicators here in pivot tables and select TB treatment card. Now I can see all of the program indicators that are associated with my program. So for example, I'm going to say, um, this is the one that I just created and the one that Shujit created earlier, extra pulmonary TB. And I'm going to say years last year nationally and say update. And you can see that I have created a this program indicator correctly, both with the count that we found from the event reports and the previously generated um, program indicator. And that's uh, 28 cases with extra pulmonary TB in 2021. Okay, so um, for this section, um, I want all of you to, um, to go through the same exercise yourself and create a program indicator for extra pulmonary TB. I um, believe that there might be additional um, details in the, in the Moodle, but let me share a screen on that one second. So here's the your learner's guide that's found on the Moodle for creating program indicators. Um, again, we're going to use the, the demo system, so not the config system. There's no data there for your programs. But if you use the, um, the demo system, maybe I can see on the, if we have this already, um, quite some questions about this. So people can post the link to the demo system there. Um, but you're going to go through the first guided exercise for creating an indicator for extra pulmonary TB. Maybe I give you um, five minutes to do that, and then we'll come back and we'll go through the rest of the um, of the event type program indicators. Okay. Um, Hi, uh, but just to go through uh, some of these again, I'm seeing from the, the chat here. Um, how do you uh, edit an option? Um, you need to go into the option set itself, but the, um, and then add in another option there. So if it's like age, you go to options, and then you could click add an option here. Um, the codes are kind of fixed as soon as you create them, just so that the, the data values um, don't have any issues. But you can change the name of an option set here as well. Um, so to make sure that an event count is completed, active, or other choices, um, you can also see within the, um, within the program indicator uh, filter as well, that there are some other options in values. So just go back to the one that we made before. In the filter, you'll see that here in the uh, variables, there's also a variable for um, event status, I believe. There's an enrollment status, yeah. But um, I think there should be one for, uh, for event status as well. So you can also say the event status or enrollment status. 
so um, so for the filter, um, once again, this is uh, excluding all of the uh, events or enrollments uh, from the program indicator um, before you uh, before you make the calculations on them. So in the program indicator details, we saw that we had analytics period boundaries. So this is only looking at events that are from the start of the reporting period and before the end of the reporting period. So that's one way that we are doing a filter. But here, here in this uh, edit the filter, we are excluding all of the events that do not meet this criteria. So we're excluding all events that have not actually said that the TB disease site is extrapulmonary. Once we've removed all of those uh, all of those events, then we can edit the expression here for the uh, the event count, right? Um, and once we are aggregating that up with the expression uh, from there, once we've decided that the event count for uh, is our expression that the final value for this single event is one, as in the one event. Um, then we start aggregating up from there. And for the, in this case, the aggregation type is count because we are just counting the number of events in a month at a district or facility level that meet those criteria. Um, we'll go again into more detail about the difference between event and enrollment analytics type, but um, essentially what you need to know is that uh, at this point right now, um, if all of the data that you want to use in the expression or filter of your program indicator is found within a single event, then you should use the event analytics type. And we will show you some more examples of this later. So um, it's been about uh, five or 10 minutes. I can see that we now have, um, how many? About 13 people who created a or EPTB. So, Yeah, we have about 13 people who created a extrapulmonary TB. So those of you who are having uh, issues creating this program indicator, because I, I know we have quite a few more people, um, please either enter into the chat or into the, the Slack channel and we can help you. Because I think it's important to get this one basic um, program indicator completed before we uh, proceed to more advanced ones. Um, sure, I see uh, Khadija's question here. Um, again, for finding what the option code is, um, we went to the option set here. Um, and we found the option set that was associated with this data element, which was the TB um, patient type. Oh, sorry, not the TB patient type, the TB um, site, TB disease site. Um, and here we saw that that was um, pulmonary and extra pulmonary. So in a, because this uh, data element uses the, um, the option code for the value, then uh, we need to use the code here. Um, but here we can see that the name of the um, option that you see during data entry is the exact same thing as the code. Um, but this is a, an important step to take if you are using um, using a data element value that has an, an option set associated with it uh, when you're constructing your program indicator. You can also go to the data element um, uh, disease site and see that this is using an option set called TB disease site.
Okay, so a few more uh, people have entered in uh, extra pulmonary. Just going to pause screen. Okay, um, just one second, and we'll uh, so wrap up the program indicator that you're currently developing. And if uh, you've already uh, finished uh, developing and testing, um, then uh, then come back to the session because we will be talking about uh, two more event uh, event count program indicators, and then you can uh, try more on your own. Hi. I think we are, um, we're back now, yeah. Um, so those of you who uh, created a program indicator um, for extra pulmonary TB, thank you and well done. Um, we'll be talking about two additional um, use cases now um, for new and pulmonary TB cases and uh, failure or uh, treatment outcome failure or died. So um, hold off on creating any more for these exercises. I'll sort of uh, walk through how to create them with you. And then um, at the end of the live demo, uh, then you can also take your turn to, to create them as well. So for this first one here for new um, and pulmonary TB cases, I want us to go back to um, the tracker capture program uh, itself. So I'm just gonna take, uh, a quick, um, a very quick new enrollment in this TB treatment card program. Um, register a new person who's also test two. And looking at the initial diagnosis stage here, um, we can see that there is a section for type of patient and a data element for patient type. Um, and we can also see that there's this uh, disease site um, data element with the option set for pulmonary and extrapulmonary, which we just saw uh, an example of earlier with our uh, discussion on um, the program indicator for extrapulmonary. So for, uh, let's say for example, that we actually don't just want to get the total number of patients who are um, extrapulmonary that have been enrolled in the program, but we actually want to know all of the, the new TB cases so now people who were um, who are relapsed or found after uh, loss to follow up, um, but people who have just been diagnosed as a new patient and um, have pulmonary TB. So this is a sort of combination of two different um, data element values within the same uh, program stage in the same event, right? So um, if I were, again, to go into event reports, I could you know, look and see how many people were, um, uh, well, I guess some, that's been changed earlier, um, extra pulmonary, but um, we could see earlier about like the uh, number of extra pulmonary cases, right? Now let's say that we want to create a program indicator to look at these uh, new and pulmonary cases. So I'm going to go down here again to this plus icon to create a new program indicator. And again, select the TB treatment card program. So um, now I'm going to name this my initials, then um, just, uh, new pulmonary TB. And I'll say, uh, give it another short name, new pulmonary TB, and a code that's not this same, or just new PTB would also work, right? Again, we'll skip the color and icon uh, buttons. Um, and the description, maybe we can give a, a bit more elaborate. So counts the number of new cases that have pulmonary TB. Then we'll skip the decimals and the data output. And um, we can think about that this is adding 
um, essentially a second data element to our, um, our filter for the number of events that meet the criteria. Um, and but so the rest of these, um, the rest of these uh, components for the program indicator are actually uh, pretty much the same as our previous uh, program indicator. So again, we are still counting um, the events, right? We're still counting the events that have new uh, a new case and also our pulmonary TB now, right? So these are essentially very similar program indicators. The aggregation type is count and the analytics type is event. So again, I will leave the rest of these blank. We do not want to display this in the tracker capture form just yet. When I go over to the expression, um, again, I've, the, the actual calculation for the, uh, the output is, um, is still going to be, let me go to our variables here. It will be the event count. And that is the final output of the program indicator when it's evaluated for every one of the uh, events um, that meet these criteria. So the final output is just give me the count of the events, which in this case is one event. Now we get to our filter, and this, uh, this one again will be a bit more uh, involved, but you've already worked, up, worked with uh, program rules and uh, you now have created a program indicator as well. So hopefully you're starting to get the hang of the, the syntax for um, doing working with program rules and program indicators. So um, the, uh, the variables that we are going to include in the filter include the disease site, once again, we'll click that. And again, we can check and see what the option uh, actually is for this. But I think we remember from before that it's pulmonary, right? And now we want to combine this with um, another, um, another criteria as well. And so just similar to program rules, we have um, not, and, or, or operators. So you can either click and, and it will um, have in these two ampersands next to each other, or you can also just type in lowercase a and d, and that will also work. But if you add something else after that, then you should see the chart is green there, right? So either one of them would work. In this case, we just click and. So the second one after this is we don't just want a pulmonary TB, but we also want a patient who is new. So the patient type equals, and then in single quotes, new. Now I'm just going to check really quickly that the, um, the option set code also matches new that we see there. Patient TV patient type options new code new. So here again, it doesn't matter, but it's good practice just to double check the, um, the option code is. So um, here we have a program indicator that's going to filter all of the events where the disease site is pulmonary and the patient type is new. And these are two uh, drop-down option sets. Right? So it's going to filter for all those events. And in the final expression, it will count one for the, uh, the event count. And then as we aggregate up all of those ones, we're just going to count all of them. So it's each going to be one count, right? So now I'm going to click save. And now I have my, um, my uh, program indicator here, the new pulmonary TB. Okay. Now let's check if this matches the uh, program indicator. So new pulmonary TB. Oh, I think I need to refresh this. Yeah, now you can see. So new pulmonary TB and new pulmonary TB. Click update. 
we can see that uh, this program indicator worked. So these are calculated on the fly. We have new pulmonary TB, 1706. And this new one I just created also gets the same result, 1706. Okay, so that was the, um, the second um, example that we have where we now combine um, data elements or two separate data elements from the same event and calculating an event type program indicator from that. So for this uh, last exercise, just on the event type program indicators, we're going to do something um, a little bit uh, a little bit more different. So if we go back to our mirrors guide here, we want to see um, treatment outcome failure or died, right? So you'll notice here that this is no longer um, new and, but this is failure or, right? So when we go back to our our uh, tracker capture here. We add new end of treatment. See, treatment outcome is either um, <clears throat> treatment failure or death. So these are two different options in our uh, treatment outcome uh, data element. So I'm going to do just this one more exercise, and then it's um, we'll do another interactive one. So I can also so just filter here. TV treatment card. I'm going to add a new one. And I'm going to call this um, something quite simple again. I'll just make this um, treatment outcome failure or death. I'm going to add my initials there. And then I'm going to say, um, So in the description, we can be a little bit more um, um, explanatory. We can say um, this is all treatment outcomes of failure or death. Now, when we're conceptualizing this program indicator again, um, once again, we have the um, aggregation type and analytics type. So we're going to continue to aggregate up this program indicator um, just for the count of the number of, sorry, just the count of the number of cases that are either on facility or uh, community-based um, DOT. And that would mean that that would just be um, the final uh, stage for this program would be, um, would be either failure or death. Um, and so we're going to continue counting. Same with the analytics type, it's also just going to be the event because this data is only found in one stage in the program and this stage is not repeated. Um, so we're just gonna be counting the number of um, events that meet this criteria, okay? Again, to get more into analytics period boundaries to direct you to the documentation. Um, so I'll go into the expression here. And once again, we can see that all of our variables and other types of, um, uh, other types of data elements from the program can be found on the right. But we're gonna go down to the event count because the final output for this uh, calculation should just be the event count. So that's the a one, the event count. And then in the filter, now it gets a bit more tricky again. Um, we remember from the program rules discussion that we can also use um, or in our uh, program rules. And a very similar logic applies to uh, program indicators and uh, expressions and filters as well. So when we say um, treatment failure is either death, <coughs> I'm sorry, treatment outcome is either death or failure, then we'll go to the end of treatment stage and you'll see treatment outcome. And then we will say that this is death 
And now here's the key. We will add or, which is these two little pipes here. So treatment outcome is either death or, and I'll just copy that one again. Yeah. So treatment outcome uh, equals failure. So just to double check here, um, just go back to maintenance here. TB treatment outcome. So uh, ah, this is actually died or treatment failure. So it's not as I expected. That's why you check the options. Died or treatment failure. Great. So now we're uh, we will include in this program indicator through the through the filter all of the events where the, the value for the data element of treatment outcome was either died or treatment failure, okay? So the value for treatment outcome was either died or it was treatment failure. In the previous example, we showed uh, two different values from two different data elements. Now these are both um, possible values of the same data element. Okay, so I'm gonna click save there. Again, I'm gonna go into my pivot tables and just um, select another one, just to test this out. So I'm going to say, you know, treatment outcome, failure or death. And then say treatment outcome, failure or death. Okay, then I'm gonna click update. And we can see that I get the same value for treatment outcome, failure death 37, as the uh, correct program indicator that's been pre-built, which is uh, 37, treatment outcome, failure death. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, leave it to you all to go through the exercises that are included in your guided exercise review. Um, again, the program that you'll be looking at is the TB treatment card, and you'll be looking at new pulmonary TB cases and a treatment outcome failure or died. Um, so when you uh, come back from that, then we're going to talk about how to do additional filterings on the uh, same program indicators, but for example, using um, the attributes as well. So the sex and age, okay? So, um, I leave it to you there. I will pause my share. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to mention them in the chat. All right, welcome back. Um, so I see that a number of you have been able to uh, create um, both of these indicators for not just treatment outcome, uh, for treatment outcome, failure or death, and uh, also for new pulmonary cases. Um, we're going to go to a, a, a break in a, in a short minute, but I want to quickly uh, walk through um, this last part that's in the learner's guide as well, which is uh, creating a copy of the failure or died uh, program indicator but filtering out um, to make sure that you're only including cases where the sex is male and the age is under 60, okay? So this is quite common operation with program indicators. You are given a, um, you're given a, a program indicator to count for um, typical data elements that have been entered for your, um, for your health program, for example. In this case, the number of, um, the number of deaths. And then they want this broken down by a number of uh, additional disaggregations based on demographics. So they don't just want to know, uh, or you, you don't just want to know the number of deaths, but you want to know number of deaths broken down by, uh, by sex and by age ranges. Um, and this is possible to do in program indicators as, uh, as I'll show briefly. Um, you can work on this uh, after the uh, discussion during the break. 
or you can do it some other time. Um, but this is just as a as an example. So let's say coming back to my um, to my earlier program indicator for treatment outcome failure or death. Um, let's say that I want this to be broken down by um, sex equals male and age under 60. Um, one of the, the easy things or, or a little trick is um, instead of creating the same indicator from scratch all over again, I can actually go into this um, actions in the right side here, and then I can click clone. And what this is going to do, you can see the URL is clone. Um, and here in the program indicator, it's included all of the same details from the uh, earlier program indicator that I just created. Uh, but now I can um, tweak this just a little bit and then save it as a different program indicator. Um, so in this example, um, I'm going to change this at the very end, just so that we have some um, consistency with the, the naming. I'm just going to keep the, the beginning of the name exactly the same. And then I'm going to change the name to male. Um, I think it was actually yeah, age over 60. So male age over 60. So here we have um, the short name. I'm also going to change to M. Uh, over 60. And then here, um, I might get, actually give the code. It's a bit easier to use codes with um, just underscores. M age 60 plus. Um, and then description, describe a bit more. Um, Number treatment outcome of failure or death for male TB cases um, over 60 years of age. Okay. And so now I'm going to uh, keep the, uh, the same aggregation type and the same analytics type. Okay. I'm also going to edit, uh, I'm not going to edit the expression, I'm going to keep that as event count. But when we're thinking about this, we should consider like the, that the number of cases of um, males who are over 60 and resulted in failure or death is going to be smaller than the total number of cases, right? And so we're going to actually be adding to our filter here um, some additional, um, some additional uh, sub-expressions or components. Shoot, there we go. So I'm going to keep these, um, this or condition and put that in parentheses because after this, I actually want to add two more and conditions or, or conjoin to it two additional conditions, right? So I'm going to say that the attribute for sex, oops, sorry, equals, uh, male in all caps. That's the uh, how the option is uh, encoded. And then I'm also going to add and the age at enrollment is uh, over 60. So um, this might actually consider as well that um, if the age is exactly 60, um, because this is a uh, this is a integer value for age, right? So um, it might actually be over or equals to 60 as well. Depends on how you're defining your boundaries of your indicator. So if people are 60 years and six months, they could also be included in this as well. Um, so over, but for now, I'm just going to keep it as um, 61 years of age or older. Okay. So I hope that this part makes sense here is that you have uh, cloned this indicator for um, treatment outcome failure or death. And the only things that we've changed are the 
name, short name, code, um, and then add it onto this filter with two additional uh, components of our criteria. So male and age over 60. So I'm going to save that. And you can see that it saved an additional uh, program indicator here for male over 60. If I go into the pivot tables, oh, I'll say, um, no. there we are, BO treatment outcome, failure, death, male over 60. Um, over 60, and now we can compare that to one sure you created. We can see that this one is now four, right? So I have also configured this uh, program indicator uh, correctly. So um, you might need to do this operation for um, a number of different um, age and sex range disaggregations. Uh, and fortunately, there's no easy way in DHIS2 core to do this right now. So essentially, if you wanted to do this for male um, under 60, then you could um, you know, clone this one and then change the, um, uh, change the greater than to less than um, in, in every case. Um, or you could continue doing this for females as well. Um, so it's a little bit of work, but um, there are quicker ways to do this by cloning the program indicator. And if you have a very long list of disaggregations that you want to do, you might consider um, talking to a database administrator or a data scientist to, um, to script out a solution for that where you're just creating a, all possible combinations. Um, but um, we won't go into that right now. It's just a, just a little tip if you're trying to create a further disaggregations of your program indicators. Okay, um, so any additional uh, questions, uh, feel free to jump over into the, um, into the chat or into the Slack questions channel and monitor that there. We're gonna take a, a short break. You can um, uh, create this um, disaggregation program indicator yourself or grab a cup of coffee and um, we'll, we'll get back to you in, I don't know, let's say, uh, 15 minutes. Can someone set a clock, please? 